Okay, what about speed? Uh, who thinks they can outrun this cheetah? Well, if the cheetah was hungry, um, <laughs> even if the cheetah wasn't hungry, 62 miles an hour, while this extremely buff looking track star on the right can go 24 miles per hour, I don't think I can quite hit that speed. Uh, humans are not as fast as most prey. Bears can run about 30 miles per hour. That's why they're omnivores. They can only catch some animals <laughs> and have to depend on berries and other things for the rest of their diet. But the cheetah is an amazing display of speed. Now, by the way, this is burst speed. The cheetah and the bear can run very quickly for a short period of time, but they don't run for long periods of time. Now, here's something that even some of the most hardcore people who think they're carnivores have trouble doing. This beautiful hunting dog is able to run while sniffing the ground simultaneously. And when I've challenged, I, I gave this talk at Suffolk University in Boston last fall, and I challenged any of the students to do that, and no one actually tried. It's just ridiculous. Humans can't do it. We're not, not designed to do it. We're not designed to track prey. Uh, did you know a dog's smell can be up to 100,000 times better than a human? And um, omnivores such as bear can smell 100 times as well. Uh, but it's just amazing how much better these animals can track. People say, well, in Copper Canyon in Mexico, people can run down deer. Well, there is a particular canyon that has walls that are just too steep for the deer to climb out of. And it's a long straight run. And it has been happened that someone actually ran down a deer in Copper Canyon. Of course, once they ran the deer down, what can they do? Bite it, get mauled by the horns, get stomped by the hooves, um, more likely. And even if they did somehow manage to knock it unconscious or kill it, how are they going to carry it back to put over a campfire? Because humans can't eat raw meat. The idea that we could catch animals is pretty ridiculous um, because this dog can follow an animal. If the animal were to climb up a steep, muddy slope where humans can't follow, this dog can go up after it. If the animal ran into the bush and ran zigzag through the jungle, a human would lose sight of it. We don't have good enough smelling or hearing to track that animal, but the dog could easily track that animal. So I'm just saying we're not set up. Humans are not genetically adapted to catch animals. Now, cats like this cute little kitten have ears that swivel like radar dishes to track prey. They can move independently as well. Human ears, of course, cannot swivel and they're not so sensitive. Plant-based animals depend more on sight, and sight's very important for determining the ripeness of fruit, especially. And uh, carnivores use smell and hearing. As you know, dogs use principally smell. Another thing humans don't have is camouflage. Can you spot the cat in this picture? Well, this uh, leopard is very well camouflaged, and. Uh, you wouldn't want to walk under that branch if the leopard was hungry. But humans don't need camouflage. That's another difference between us and animals that hunt prey, carnivores. Another difference is that this cat on the top has a huge amount of fur on its chest. It's armored. So that if this cat were to pick up, let's say, a rooster, and the rooster would try and dig in his talons into the cat, it wouldn't hurt it at all. Or if the cat got a, um, a rat, the rat's claws and teeth wouldn't hurt it. But if the surfer boy below were to grab a hold of a rooster, his chest would get shredded because he's not designed or adapted to catch animals. Another difference is that you notice the cat in the picture on the top is kind of sitting down. Predators sit. Cats and dogs sit or move, whereas humans are able to stand up. This is also characteristic of plant-eating animals, that we can stand up more. 
what about protein and calcium in diet? Um, on the left, I have calcium in milligrams and humans, I have two ways to measure calcium. Okay, the total calcium in the food and the effect of calcium when you account for the um, reduction of available calcium from excess protein principally and also sodium reduces your ability to uh, really intake the calcium. So the first side is SAD diet, that's a uh, standard American diet. And the amount of calcium was 1290, but the protein was 149. Now humans need 56 RDA adults. That's the highest RDA for adult humans. Over the age of 50, it goes down to 46. So if we need 56 and the standard American diet gives us almost 100 grams too much, that 100 grams reduces the effect of calcium from 1290 to 685, barely enough to keep bones together. The Atkins diet with 122 grams of protein versus a need of about 50 is actually negative 312 milligrams of calcium per day. We need at least 800 and they're getting negative 319. Too good. Not too good for bones. The paleo diet and the keto diet are very much touted by meat eaters as being uh, somehow desirable. When you analyze them, though, they don't look so desirable. Paleo diet, people lost 240 milligrams of calcium every day. The keto diet, about 800 milligrams per day. Studies on people following the keto diet for long periods of time show that they have more bone breakage and less, mus less bone mass. So the, um, the keto diet has a ridiculous protein of 235 per day. Um, there are other disadvantages to having too much protein. The South Beach diet only got 295 effective calcium in a day. Now a transition vegetarian diet with a lot of white flour, eggs and cheesy stuff um, did get plenty of protein and plenty of calcium. The Mediterranean diet got enough calcium and too much protein. Uh, Mediterranean diet is often referred to as a desirable diet and in comparison to any of the above diets, yes, it's desirable. In comparison to the two below diets, it's not desirable. So it just depends what you're comparing it to. A vegan whole food diet that I analyzed got 640 milligrams of calcium per day, a little bit low. And I do advise uh, myself and others on a plant-based diet to get some extra calcium, either through food or supplements. And if it's supplements, please not the calcium carbonate form, which is so poorly assimilated. Now a carefully chosen raw vegan diet was able to get 1120 milligrams of calcium effectively with 81 grams of protein. By the way, I know that a lot of people say that uh, vegan diets are not high enough in protein, but my analysis uh, of these two diets shows that yes, they did get plenty of protein, and my analyses of many other vegan diets show that yes, in general, they do get plenty of protein. Now, a couple notable exceptions, people eating just raw fruit, for example. The protein quality is another myth that has been spread around really quite a lot. I have two diets here, one with eight ounces of tuna and four ounces of beef on the left. On the right, we have eight ounces of potatoes and two ounces of nuts. Now, the individual colored bars show the amino acids that are essential. The top bars show the desired spectrum of amino acid. We need a little more of some, a little less of others. And below shows that the spectrum is completely filled in both diets, both with the tuna and beef and the potatoes and nuts. Amino acid balance in real diets is always fine. High quality protein is always obtained in people who get enough protein. 